for anyone who watches my uh, YouTube videos, I feel like I should say, welcome to this meeting. Um, I'm going to go over today how to do VBA programming, especially for those who have not VBA before. To actually start programming, you have to have the developer tab open on Excel, options, and I'll say customize ribbon and check the developer tab right there. And that gives me developer right here. And this gives me access to be able to write macros and get into the developer environment. So I'll just check macros and uh, it has any existing macros that you need. And this is the programming environment. If I can get it to snap, Bandicam is a little bit stubborn in that. There we go. And to start programming, I just say, I go insert module. And I start off by saying sub, open close parenthesis. Okay, so this is a programming environment here, and this is my spreadsheet here. And one important thing about uh, this kind of programming is knowing how to communicate with the user. So one of the most basic functions you have is MSG, B-O-X as one word, and then I can tell the user anything I want. And if I run this by pushing this play button, box comes up, hello, and then it ends. And I'll tell you why we do quotations in just a minute. But this is a way that we can display information for the user. Similarly, I can do an input box. Super is just an arbitrary variable, and I'm going to go into variables in just a second. But if I have an input box, then I can run this. Hello, what is your name? And I can say, my name is Joseph. And so we can get information and we can give information. And I'll go into variables, I guess. Variables is something that can hold a value. So if I say dim supra, that means dimension supra, I'm telling the Excel sheet, okay, supra is a variable. So when you see supra, it means something. And all of you know I drive a supra, so I'm a little bit biased. But I can, I can tell the VB program to display what the value of supra is. So I'm going to run this slowly with F8. There we go. So I push F8 and it says, okay, display hello, push F8 to execute that line. Boom, hello. Push F8 again. And then to display the value of Supra, there you go. Does that make sense? Because when I was teaching myself VBA, I was clenching the vowels off my keyboard. The, the consonants were okay, but the vowels are pretty bad. But did, does anybody look at this and wonder what's going on here? Okay. So these are basic inputs and outputs for our code. But many times we're going to need to access the specific individual cells on the spreadsheet. And there's two ways to reference what these values are. And as a quick side note, if you want to block a code, a line of code from executing, you can put an apostrophe from it and it treats it as a comment. So uh, now the code will automatically skip anything with an apostrophe. There's two ways to reference these cells. The first one is the range command. So I can say range, open parenthesis, and in quotations, let's say column A, and then I'll add in row 1. And I can even say supra equals whatever is inside of A1. In this case, I'll type in Corvette. <laughs> 
and okay I'll fine I'll save you when you save a workbook make sure it's macro enabled and I'll put that on my desktop so it should it'll be a dot XLSM so when I run there we go it tells me that super equals Corvette which is just the value that's in range a one yeah yeah we <laughs> we may have differing opinions on what that <laughs> Now, the other way, anyone, any questions on the range value so far or how to use range? If I wanted range, if I wanted this cell, I'd say range A2, A3, D5, so on and so forth. If I uh, use the second one, I can say I better start using regular variables instead of car values. Variable, I can say variable equals and the cells command is C E double L S and then row comma column one comma two is two is to say row one second column so it'd be this cell so I'll say Honda and then I'll say So it'll tell me Corvette and Honda. So we've successfully referenced B2. Does that make sense to everybody so far? All right. Sometimes when you program a while, you can take for granted things that, that are hard to learn when you're first learning. So please ask questions. Now, it's all good that I can reference A1, but it's kind of confusing when I run a program and it comes up Corvette. Honda, what are these referencing? So I can what's called concatenate strings. And if you remember when it's in parentheses, the code is going to take it at face value. It's going to say, oh, A1 is A1. If it's not in parentheses, like this, it's not going to message box S U P R A. It's going to message box whatever's in whatever the, the variable is worth. So <clears throat> I can say message box and I'll add in parentheses range A1 is and then I'll add an and sign supra and these and signs the VB code says okay I'm gonna take whatever is before the and sign and whatever is after the and sign and make them one thing so if I run this code again range A1 is Corvette the and sign combined them. Any questions on that? All right. Now I brought myself a, a script to go through to make sure I didn't miss anything. So I'm going to go grab that real quick. One sec. Okay, perfect. Covered everything so far. Okay. So if I'm getting a list of cars, let's say that this is, you know, cars that I own. <laughs> we can all dream, right? And I want to know if range A1 is a supra. Then we can do an if statement, which uh, can make the program act differently based on the conditions that are on the spreadsheet. So I start off by saying if, and then I do a logical statement, which usually includes greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to. So I'm going to say if A1, I'm sorry, if range, a1 equals supra then everybody see how I did that I simply put the value in quotations so the VB code knows to take 
S-U-P-R-A and not anything that super might be worth. And it references range A1. Then, and I can set another range equal to another value, say B1. Then range B1 equals cool car. Well, I got to put that in parentheses. And then with every if statement and my parentheses, there we go. With every if statement, we have to tell it when the if is done. So end if. <clears throat> so the code's going to say, oh, if range A1 meets this condition, then I'm going to do anything between the if and the end if. And you can have arguably a, an infinite amount of lines of code between the if and the end if. So if I run the code, nothing happens. But if I change this to supra, cool car. So we have a, a code that successfully runs. So what if it isn't a supra? Well, I could foreseeably say if range A1 equals Corvette, then and do something else. But it gets kind of messy if I have a whole bunch of ifs. So what I can do is say else if, oh, and then I can have another logical statement range A1 equals, let's try minivan, then, and I have to close the parentheses on my A1, I'll get rid of this and if. So I'll try minivan. Not cool car. So we can successfully navigate between if and else if and if it doesn't equal supra or minivan then it's not going to do anything and if I want it to do something, even though not all the conditions are met, I can tack on an else. And that's a, if none of those conditions are met, it will just default to this. And I'll, I'll say range B1 equals and I'll do a not. When you have two quotations next to each other, it means nothing or blank. And I'll change this to Corvette. So now that this doesn't equal Supra and this doesn't equal minivan, it should make this cell a not value. And there it goes. So we know if, else if, and else statements. Any questions on those? All right, we can also do a numerical comparison. <clears throat> and I'll run a quick example of that. And again, I am recording my screen in voice right now, so you'll be able to access this video as a reference. I'll say if range A1 is greater than five, then and I'll say range B1 equals 5. Else This logic isn't entirely true, but it should work for what we're doing. I say 10 greater than 5. 
I can say 1 less than 5. The fallacy of logic here, if I say 5, then it comes up as less than 5. And that, of course, is not true, so I can add another if if I wanted to, uh, where it would say, else if this equals 5, then and I can have a... Do you want me to go through that, or does that make sense to everyone so far? Okay. So that's great because I can reference A1, but I've got a whole bunch of values down here that are not being checked. It's only checking A1. And to do that, I would like to use what's called a loop. And loops are very essential for programming, and there are several types of loops that are readily available and easy to use in VBA. So the first thing I want to do is a do loop. And this will enable me to check to the end of the spreadsheet if I wanted to. So I'm going to move this down here so we can focus on the do loop. And it's pretty simple to start. You say do, you go down, loop, boom. And what it's going to do is the program is going to say, OK, I'm in a loop now. So I'm going to do anything here until I come to this loop. And then I'm going to go back up to do and do it all again and do it all again and do it all again until I'm told otherwise. So what I would like it to do is control X, control V. I want it to say if range A1 is greater than 5 then and do what we've done already. But it's going to check A1 over and over and over and over and over and over. So I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to use that and sign that we went over. And I'll say row. And I'll use a variable. And so I'm going to dim row up here. Notice if I type in row in all caps, this row will change when I push enter. Boom, it changes to <coughs> all caps. Handy feature in Excel uh, helps you to see that you've typed in a variable right and it matches all the, the caps that you do. So now I have range A and I'll say row equals 1 up here. So it'll say A and it will read 1. It's greater than 5. And then I can say row equals row plus 1. And what I've done is I've said row equals 1 plus 1, so now row is 2. So we'll go and check row 2, 3, 4, so on, so forth. In this case, I'll do 1, 10, 25, just as a baseline to test these things. <clears throat> Again, apologies for my voice being sick on Sunday. Now, the problem here is it's going to say do loop, and it's going to run forever and ever and ever because there's nothing to tell it when to stop. So I'm going to add another if statement. If row is greater than, I'll go row 10 then and I'll say exit do and if and does everybody follow that so the minute that the value of row is greater than 10 it will exit this loop and start reading code below what's listed as loop does that makes sense to everyone all right ask any questions because VBA can be hard to learn if you've never programmed before so let's run that, and I've got a silly computer that only lets me hold the FN key for F8. But I'm going to say row equals 1, and then I'm going to go into the do loop. And it's going to say, oh, is, is it greater than 5? And it's not, so it says less than 5. It adds 1 to row, so now row equals 2. And a trick that you can do to track your variables, I'm going to add a watch onto row. So you can see that row equals 1, but when I execute this line, row now equals 2. And then as I say, well, is row greater than 10? And it's not, so it skips the exit do, and it goes to loop. And then it goes back up, and it starts checking row 2. Again, less than 5. And it should have recorded B1 there. Let's. Oh, so we've got a bug. Let me know if anyone sees the bug. And it is good practice to indent these functions. Is it because uh, you're only referencing B1 every time? Oh, that's right. Thank you very much, Cameron. 
So B and row and row. So now let's give it a try. And I'll get rid of this. So it loops again. Boom. Cameron is the man of the hour. And then it knows greater than five and greater than five. <clears throat> and then it will keep looping and a knot is less than five apparently. <laughs> if I wanted to clean this up, then uh, and I could do that with some more if statements. Okay, any questions so far at all? Okay, well, the, the problem here is that I am getting a bug because every time I run the program, it gives me stuff where there's no stuff over here. And there's a new kind of do loop that will eliminate that problem. And it will also eliminate my need to check to see if a value is 10 to keep it from running infinitely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to do that, I can say do while, and then I can put another logical statement, just like an if statement, and if that statement is true, then it will keep going. If that statement is false, then boom, it's done. So I'm going to say do while range A and row does not equal, that's the sign for does not equal, blank. I'm essentially with that statement saying, if there's something in this cell, then keep going. If there's nothing in these cells, stop. So if I run that, good. And now row is five, and it says, is range A5 blank, and in this case it is, so it goes straight to the end of the program. No more. And that <coughs> is a way that you can easily clean it up, not have to worry about doing an if statement, exit do, so do while is a really amazing uh, loop that makes things pretty easy. Any questions on do while? Okay, and again, Code is one of those things where it's easy when you're looking at it, and then it's hard to remember when you're when you're down the road. So I will be posting this video so you can reference it anytime. Okay. I'm going to do another thing. I'm thinking about the best way to to do this. Um, do while range A and row. Yeah, actually it does not equal not as good. I'm going to say if range A and row equals supra, like we were doing before, then, and change this to Yeah, okay. Okay, good. And I'm wondering, what if I have a Supra here, but then I've got a Mark IV Supra? Well, that presents a problem because I still want to know if it's a cool car, <laughs> but um, this MKIV can make it not equal just Supra. I would have to write here. And if I have a hundred different kinds of Supra, that's a big problem in itself because I've got, I've got to have all, all these different conditions that would cover it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here and use the in string command to figure out if there's, if this cell is concerned with Supra or not. And I'll just comment this out for a quick second to explain in string.
Yes. Okay. So if I have that's what the in string command looks like. And that means I'm going to search for S-U-P-R-A inside of any string. And a string is a group of numbers or letters. So in string, and then I open parenthesis, and it says, okay, what string do you want to look at? And I want to look at the string of A2, whatever's in cell A2. <coughs> and then I add a comma to say, okay, that's where I want to look. The next thing it asks is, what do you want to look for? And I want to look for Supra. If in string range A2 equals Supra, then so if this is a true statement, if Supra is in range A2, Tell me yes. Yes. If I move this down, it doesn't do anything because it's not there. I can also add an else. And it tells me no. So that's a basic in string function. Any questions on that, how it works? Okay. All that stuff would be case sensitive. Yeah, you're right. And I'll tell you how to get around that too. <laughs> so here, um, I can say if range A and row equals supra, well, in string of range A and row and I gotta add a second parenthesis because the in string uses a parenthesis there we go cool car <laughs> And uh, I had a not value right here, so it stopped at this not value. If I move this up, cool. But it doesn't do anything with any van. So that's a very handy way to manipulate all of your all of your spreadsheets. And as Cameron brought up, what if I lowercase this? What's the program going to do? It ignores it. So what I can say is okay I again will just move down here so you can get the idea. Yeah I'll probably comment out my code too. That way you can see it run. I can use the uppercase command. So I can say message box range A1 and I can say message box and the ucase command is ucase which means take everything and make it uppercase range A1 And you need a G there. And an end parenthesis for the UK function. Supra, Supra. So you can capitalize everything with that UK function. And I can even say range A1 equals UK range. A1. And I need an extra parenthesis. 
for my new case. So if you watch range A1 over here, I'll get two message boxes, and then A1 is all capitalized after that. So you can, uh, on some of those Honeywell sheets and sheets that we work with, you can get varying cases, and it's nice to have the UCase function make everything universal, so um, it's you don't have to have a bunch of weird conditions and whatnot. Any questions on that? I'm going pretty fast, but I think I'm leaving a reference that you can look back on so that you can get a good idea of a bunch of different VB functions. Anything you want to go over again? I know that some of these things are just a matter of practice, practice, practice. So if you have any questions, let me know. The next very handy thing to look at is an array. Sometimes you need a, a, uh, a variable that will have a number of variables in it. So the solution to that is an array. So I'll dim um, my array and I'll say to, to tell VB that this is an array, open and close parenthesis as string. And generally you want to have an index to go along with it. Um, and I'll, I, yeah, I'll get into that. So I'll say my array and they start at zero. So my array of zero, the first thing that I want to put into this array equals range A1. My array of one equals range A2. My array of Two equals range A3. So I'm going to make an array of all these values going down. Then I'll say, I want you to show me my array of zero. one and two. Ah, it's been a while since I've done an array without an index. Thank you. So if I redim, then I'm saying, oh, thank you, VBA. I'm going to give this a new dimension and my array of zero. So if you move equals range A1, down to the next line. Oh, okay. There we go. You're right, Cameron. Okay, Cameron's the man of the hour. We have two cameras that are the man of the hour now. Then I can say my array of zero equals range of A1. And I'll do this. Beautiful. Okay. I'll run through this slowly. So my array zero equals Supra, Mark IV Supra, and Minivan. That's basic way of doing array. The preserve function here means, well, when I set the one value of the array to be range A2. I want to keep the supra value in the zero slot of the array. Does that make sense? If I don't say preserve, take this out, and hopefully I won't get an error. Then I get a not value mark for supra and minivan because I didn't have a preserve here, so it erased this first value. Does that make sense to everyone? Arrays are a little complicated. Let me know if you have a question on that. So you can use an array in a looping structure. Um, 
no one has ever done that before. It sure helped me. Uh, so dim, I'll say array index. And I'll say array index equals zero. 99% of the time, this is how I use an array, so this is what I'm most familiar with. I'm going to say do while range a1, I'm sorry, range a and row has something in it. I'm going to say row equals one. And I can go ahead and use an array to pick up all of these values. Get rid of this cool car. All of these values by using the loop and I'll say redim preserve array my array of array index and what I've said is okay I, this is telling VB I'm going to put a value in here and it's going to be my array of whatever the array index is in this case zero and it is good practice to indent in your dues and so I'm going to say my array of, in this case, zero equals well, range A and row. So my array of zero equals this and that's all well and good and if I loop that it's going to keep on saying a1 is supra. So I'm going to say array index equals array index plus one. And now I'm going to have <laughs> um, my array of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, infinity all equal supra. And I want to move down, so all I have to do is say row equals row plus one. and then it will stop when this equals not. So I'll run that through slowly. And I'm gonna add a watch on my array. And I'm gonna add another watch on my array index. So my array of array index so far equals not, and now it equals supra. Now array index equals array index plus one. So array index equals one, and row equals two. And we loop through again. So now we've built an array that has two values. Loop through again. And is it blank? Yes, it is. So we've made a program that can load into an array anything that's in this column. And I can add a bunch of stuff. And it will pick up. I'll do a, I'll do a message box. And when you write macros, it's nice to have it done on the end because then you know the program has stopped running and you're not stuck in a loop. And oh, I forgot I don't have a pause break on this keyboard. I was going to open up my array, but I can't do that on this computer. But just believe me that, you know, an array had these wonderful relevant value, values in them. <clears throat> uh, it can be challenging to, you know, let's say I want to then take all of these very relevant intelligent values and make them into one string. There is a kind of loop that is perfect for arrays and Wes has taught me how to do this. He's the man. I'm going to use a for loop. So we've been doing do loops and do while loops which say just keep doing this until a condition has been satisfied. But a for loop that says I want you to loop a certain number of times which is awesome. So I'm going to say for, 
and I'm going to say I'm going to use a random variable x equals and I, I want to loop through every value of this array and so I'm going to say for x equals L bound which means the lowest bound on the array 0 L bound of my array 2 U bound of my array means go to the highest value and then I'll say next x. So what it's going to do is uh, go to the lowest bound and say okay 0 and then the next x and say well the next value in the array is 1, next value is 2, next value is 3 and I'm going to keep doing that until I hit the top bound of the array and then I'm done after that. So it, you can constrain it to loop as many times as you want and I'm going to say uh, I'll use another variable a very generic variable equals variable and my array of x. So it's going to say the variable equals itself and add on the next value. And I'll even add on a and. I'd have to take further considerations to make sure that this is clean, but for the example, I think it'll work. No. There we go. So we're going to pick up all the values. There we go. So my array equals all these values, and I'm going to add a watch on variable. <clears throat> so we've picked up the first value. And now it's <laughs> Mark IV Supra. And they're all separated by commas because I added this comma here. Does everyone have, uh, have any questions about this line or any other line for that matter? So I can use this and sign to concatenate just about anything. And if I wanted to have a space after, I simply add a space after the comma and I'll add a message box of the variable. And notice I don't use quotations because I want it to show me the value of the variable, not V-A-R-I-A-B-L-E. So when I run this, it gives me a comma with a space after every value. Likewise, if I wanted to have more spaces, I could add as many spaces as I wanted, and it would give me those values in variable. Any question about that? Okay, well, we've got about nine minutes and no questions. That wraps up the stuff that I wanted to share today. This is, uh, I, I use <clears throat> all of these things in all of my programs, so they're very fundamental, uh, good functions to know, the loops, the ifs, uh, the message boxes, everything. Uh, if there's enough interest or if, if anybody wants, I'll do a second Lunch and Learn on some of the more advanced VBA things of how you can go into other spreadsheets and pull values out and how you can uh, make folder structures from scratch and, and do a lot of other cool stuff like that. So email me and let me know if you're interested and I will do it. And I thank you all so much for attending. Email me or come get me if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Oh, and before I close, a few other things. This is my YouTube channel, and I post programming tutorials. I'm going to be adding some um, programming tutorials coming up here but for VBA. So feel free to, I'll, I'll be uploading this video onto my channel as well. So you can find that as a reference here, and I'm going to try to post it on our network drive as well. So you can uh, access this material that way, plus some additional programming materials. and. Okay, that's enough of you. Polyglot programming is an awesome... Hopefully it'll come up. And I'm not seeing it. Hmm. So Polyglot Programming is a channel run by Wes, and Wes 
and Cameron are both darn good programmers. And they, um, well, Wes has a, a YouTube channel, so please subscribe to it. It'll show them a lot of support. So go to Polyglot Programming, and it's going to be a darn good YouTube channel when Wes gets some videos up. Subscribe. And I made the channel last month, and this month I've been in the process of a movie, which sucks because I've got like two or three videos like almost done. So shortly I will have some really good content on it. Excellent. Um, uh, I again apologize for my sick, somewhat annoying voice. I annoy myself with it. If you guys are cool, then that's good. Um, again, thank you so much for coming. I hope you've learned something. I'm determined to make learning DVA easy for you guys, so I'll do anything I can. Thank you so much, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.